Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to go over some information about the Anycubic Mega Zero and some improvements that I would like to see. And we're also going to modify it. This printer is working well enough that, um, I mean, look at these results. I mean, that's beautiful. <laughs> that was printed on the Mega Zero. That I am going to make some modifications, some upgrades. Look at that one. Uh, I've already upgraded the nozzle. The nozzle that came with mine was a little bum. I think it had too large a bore. And so it was causing jamming when you would extract the filament. I think the hot end is fine. I already tried to rebuild the hot end. There was no leaking filament. I just think there was a... I think the hole inside the nozzle is too big. Just a bad nozzle. So I put a new nozzle on it. Works fine. I have now upgraded that to a 0.5 millimeter copper nozzle. Nickel plated from E3D. So I'm getting some really nice prints with that. We are going to put a wham bam removable print surface on it i have installed a 25 watt heat bed on it i'll show you how to do that for like 15 20 bucks um i also bought a switch so that we can turn it off after 30 minutes so i can plug it in turn on the um uh, heat bed and then hit a button and 30 minutes later it'll turn off um, because you obviously have no control over the heating pad that i added we're also going to put replacement die compression springs on here and we are also going to put stepper dampers on here to quiet the thing up a little bit. And I also got a noise blocker 40 millimeter fan to replace the hot end fan. So we're going to make this into a really, really nice machine. It works so well and the structure is so strong that I think it is worthy of being upgraded. So stay tuned as we play around with the Anycubic Mega Zero. So we've already put a replacement nozzle on here. I have a E3D copper nickel plated nozzle, so I get good heat transfer. This I believe is a Creality um, silicon sock. It does not properly fit, it's too big, but the fit around the nozzle is tight enough that it holds itself in place. So it gives my hot end some protection from the blower. If anybody knows what size this is and where I can get silicone socks to correctly fit this, let me know. And we're also going to replace the fan on here because it's a little bit noisy. It uses a power brick, so we don't have to worry about noise from that. If the autofocus would deign itself to actually focus for us, there we go. So, nice UL listed power supply. And right now, I'm going to replace this bed with a wham bam bed. And I don't know if you can see it under there, but there is my 25 watt heater pad that I installed. And there's your AC cord coming out the back right there. It slides nice and smoothly on there. I'm going to add some tension relief to here to prop that cable up a little bit to make sure it stays away from the mechanics. And then I just plug that in whenever I want to use it. This here is the switching unit. So this here I can turn it on by pressing this button. And then if I just press one of these buttons, it stays on for X number of minutes. I'm only going to use the 30 minute option. This is for fans and heater blowers in your bathroom. So I'll just press click 30 minutes and 30 minutes later the heater will turn off automatically because once you get the print up so high you don't need the heater anymore so stay tuned for that as we remove the print surface that's on here and replace it with a wham bam print surface do be sure that if you buy a wham bam print surface that you order the polycarbonate skin not the pex skin because the pex skin requires heat and that little 25 watt heater is not going to be hot enough for that to work and then you can't turn it off um, so make sure you get the PC surface, the polycarbonate PC surface, because that will work without heat or with low heat. So I used my chisel to poke into the edge here and begin peeling it up. Now I have enough up that I can peel it up with my hands, just gently. You want to make sure you support the bed on this side as you peel it up. Peel it up gently. Don't try to grab this and just rip it up. Not only will it tear, you'll leave more adhesive behind and have a larger cleanup. And you absolutely do not want to bend this bed. So be gentle. Don't bend the bed. Because if you bend this bed, well, you're not going to be able to level your printer. So just be gentle. Work it off slowly. As you can see, even with one hand, it does come off little by little. Just work it like that. See? Just little by little. Just don't apply too much crazy force to it so that you don't bend your bed. There you go. The old heat surface is removed. I would actually like to have another one of these so I can put it on the Wham Bam. Just so I can keep that little Mega Zero logo, but that's okay. Wham Bam logo is orange and I love that. So I have just a little bit of um, 
stuff to clear up. I'm going to take my chisel to it, work this stuff off. Alcohol will help with softening it up, so we'll goo gone. But I'm going to clean this up and then apply the new magnetic surface. There we go. Surface is cleaned off nice and smooth. There's still little bits of residue, but that'll actually help with adhesion a little bit maybe. I don't know. I don't feel like getting it off anymore, but there's no more... Nothing that'll keep the bed from being level. Just any little bits I find. This was raised a little bit. The chisel actually chopped it down. It's a little logo. CRF, whatever that means. But now we're going to apply the magnetic surface. And I've already applied the sticker to the steel plate. Magnetic surface is applied. I use the 235 by 235 Ender 3 sized Wham Bam. And it is just a hair too big. So I did. I installed it perfectly on these two edges. And then I used my chisel and just ran it right along the edge, just like this, and chopped off all the excess magnetic surface. Same thing back here, ran my chisel along the edge, got rid of that, chipped away at the corners to make sure they are nice and rounded so they don't peel up. Now the plate itself is no problem, as long as you make sure you center it so that it goes in between the two rails. So you do need to make sure it actually fits in between the two rails when you put the plate on because I believe the 220 by 220 is gonna to be too small. So you wanna use the 235 by 235. Better to be slightly big than slightly small, and as you can see, it fits between the rails no problem as long as you install it correctly. So you'll have a little lip on the steel plate on both sides, but that is fine because this is a magnet and a steel plate. But there you go, wham bam, it's installed. Now I gotta re-level the printer. Although next, this Tuesday, I'm gonna to have to take it apart again to put the proper die compression springs on here but at least now I have a flex surface that I can pop off and use to remove my prints much much better alrighty so I figured I'll show you guys some of the prints that I got off of the um, Mega Zero all of these prints came off of the any giving Mega Zero and they are pretty phenomenal uh, I've been making rockets so MechG made a new bow mark, which I have massively upscaled. <laughs> this is all printed on the Any Cubic Magazine. This is all in sections. And just assembled together. And this will actually fly. I just got to find out where the CG is supposed to be on a bow mark. Because, <laughs> like, as a glider, you'd want it, like, right around here. As a rocket, you probably need it up here. Uh, but there's the bow mark by MechG. I also printed one in periwinkle silk. This is just the test print. This one, I could make this fly if I wanted to, but it would probably come apart the first time I flew just because it's a silk. And that is a little bit of um, Mystic Green. I think that's Mystic Green Persimmon right there. Again, all of this printed on the Anycubic Mega Zero. And I also printed wood filament. This was actually quite a lot of fun. Put the nose comb back on for you. So that was printed with uh, 3D Hero on Amazon. That is wood PLA. Beautiful, you can stain this. It did an impressively good job. Very clean print. I have no complaints whatsoever. This one will fly. I even 3D print my own conformal launch lugs. So these launch lugs actually have a curve in them. And that was printed on the Mega Zero as well, and that curve will match the curve on the tube. Or close enough to give you a better glue joint. Then I have more rockets. Um, this is, a, oh, most of this is designed in Tinkercad, by the way. I'm gonna call this the Alcubiri One. See if anybody can figure out what that means. So that's got a nice ring fin. This body is all one piece, including the fins. I got some detailing that I added in Tinkercad. Some ribbing and some lines on the nose cone. All of that came out beautifully. This is Dark Glint from Filament 1. And this is Saturn's Rings Gold Translucent Filament from Alien 3D. Both printed beautifully on the Mega Zero. Then um, I made a Space Fighter. 
I just thought that was cute. I did modify the design to make these a little more angled so that this overhang isn't so bad because it actually prints like that. That came out wonderfully. But if mine wanted me to make some fins for him for a particular rocket, an E2X series rocket from Estes called the Orange Crush. And so here is my version of the fin that actually is printed in one piece with no support with those tabs and the whole thing prints like that and that's the slot that exists on the orange crush and the fin as I reproduced the fin can too that's a resin print but that is a filament one glint print and it slots right in there no problem locks in place that worked out much better than I thought it would I made motor retainers so if you have a when you have a motor on the back of a rocket I can show you on this one here the resin one this just makes it convenient. You stick your motor in, and then you thread this on, and now your motor stays put. You don't have to worry about springs and screws. You just unscrew it, put your motor in, screw it back on, you're good to go. So I print my own motor retainers, and that also printed on the Mega Zero. The Mega Zero has been running nonstop pretty much 24 7. The only time that printer ever stops is if I'm making a modification to it, such as to make this video or if it finishes before I wake up in the morning. Otherwise, it doesn't stop. <laughs> that thing is just chooching along. And um, I have something else I want to show you, but first, MechG um, was able to model one of my designs because I don't have the modeling skills. So I gave him drawings and descriptions and he modeled it for me, and the end result is amazing. Oh yeah, look at that. That thing is, sex with fins and a rocket in the back <laughs> that comes apart your tube goes in there your parachute sits around the tube here but look how smooth that is there isn't a straight line anywhere on this model no part of this model anywhere has a straight line it's it's incredible now this original one I had a problem where because of the three fins it actually gave a triangular shape and so he made one called Shark Attack, and I thought it was wonderful, so I'm going to print that one too. So there is Shark Attack. So you can see the front's got shark teeth and eyes, and that will go like that. And that is Shark Attack. He actually modified it a little further, made the fins more shark-like, so that'll be interesting to try to print. I look forward to making that fly. And then... I, as a result of working on this, I got an idea to make a whole new kind of rocket. Well, actually, just the E2X rocket that Estes makes, you know, with the modular construction, but designed from the ground up for 3D printing in mind. And I came up with the MRS, the modular rocket system. And here is the first one, the SAR, some assembly required. That's actually a resin nose cone. And you have your threads on the back. That's a resin print, but I also have it in PLA. The fins simply slide out. And they have that kind of a shape there. And that same kind of shape here. So these are all vase mode printed. Then the fin simply slots into the slot. And the retainer actually keeps the fins in there, so you don't even have to glue them. Well, the cool thing about making something like this is that the sky's the limit. It's 3D printing. So that's a three fin unit. I have a four fin unit, five fin, six fin, seven fin, eight fin, nine fin, 10 fin, 12 fin. I gotta figure out how to do an 11 too. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so I have different pieces. So this is a four fin can, and these are the accessories that I made for it. So here's a, here's a fin, okay? This is a little rocket booster kind of thing, you know, just to decorate your model. Here's a little shuttlecraft. So you're, you're going to fly down to your planet while your ship stays in orbit. There's your little shuttlecraft. And then I have um, you know, atmospheric jet engines, um, SRB boosters. So this is a long skinny booster, a fat SRB, a little cargo pod. And one of the designs I came up with is this one, which looks really, really slick. You're going to get a kick out of this. There you go. So this one has wing-like fins with a nice little T-tail fin up top here. 
to compensate for the drag created by the atmospheric jet engines. And you even got a little missile. So yeah, the enemy's gate is down. Bombs away, baby. <laughs> Same thing. This can also be FDM printed, of course. I modified my retention here. So that gets glued to that. And now that has a little bit of an extension on it. So that when you put this on, nothing can fall off the rocket. Because it closes up the back end of those channels where all the accessories go. And all this, except for the resin part, of course. But all this, all this, printed on a Mega Zero. It's... A pretty amazing machine. I mean, I'm in, I'm impressed. Um, the only problem I have is that it's a vase mode specific issue because um, I don't I don't see it on regular prints. But when doing vase mode prints, you have to go slower because the CPU can't keep up with the calculations, and you'll get things like this, all that zitting in that vase mode nose cone because I tried to go too fast. But um, that's something they should be able to fix in firmware. Beyond that, <laughs> this um. I'm impressed. It, they, they did a halfway decent job on this printer. I think it's got a lot of potential with only a few little things that they got to fix. That is it. I will see you guys on the next stream or the next video. You guys have a great night and thank you for watching.